This is uh, assignment number five, or our final. Uh, I'm Karen Burns. This is for computational thinking. For my assignment, I am using Parlay, which is a website that allows for Socratic seminars to take place. In the Socratic seminar itself, I am allowing my students uh, an area for hosting live discussions. I can also turn this into homework if you want, but we're going to focus on the live discussion part and we're going to focus on uh, the chance that it gives everyone to participate in a discussion. So using Parlay in the website, um, I will need to use it to show my students how to use it first. Um, this is something that will take time. They have to have interaction. They have to have appropriate time to play around with it to be able to understand what it is that I'm expecting them to do when I release it to them to do on their own independently. Um, having this done as assignments prior to this, they should be able to put in the work moving forward to put it together to effectively have this discussion amongst themselves. For integrating it into my classroom, um, I can use this activity with scaffolding. So that means that I am able to differentiate for my classes as needed, which I think is super helpful. And it can also be used across content areas. It's not just something for history or language arts based classes, uh, something where there's heavy reading and writing to do. You can do it in science. You can do it in math. You can even do it in foreign language and art. It, I would even suspect you could even do it in like uh, PE and stuff like that. It is where you can post a prompt. You can include all of the resources that you would like for them to use. And then you can set them free to post their ideas, post their response to that prompt that you had made. And on top of that, you can allow them to interact with each other. So it's not just here's this, answer it. It's here's the resources that I'm giving you and the prompt, and I need you to s go through the, the evidence that's being provided to you. Go through the resources that's, that's been given and for you to come up with your own answer, your own idea of what it is that I'm trying to get you to answer. And on top of that, we can also have the students view other responses, and they are able to then take it, maybe gain a little bit of a different perspective, like, oh, I never thought of it being like that, or, oh, this makes me question all of it to begin with. And it allows them to have that space to think about their thoughts, which I think is something that gets overlooked quite a bit um, for our students in the technological digital age. It's, if it's not given to me fast, I don't want it, so why should I even think about it? And when we actually sit down and we think about what it is that we're thinking of, I think that really helps our students grow. In order to release the responsibility gradually for this activity, I know that I have to have given my students time and experience with Parlay for them to understand the assignment and for them to understand the expectations that I am setting for that assignment and for that class. After that, I know that I can give them that responsibility and I know that I can be in a position of a facilitator instead of taking the lead on this activity. I can say, all right, we have 15 minutes for this activity. This is what's expected and this is what I should see at the end. They can ask me for direction, but like with this class, my honors class that I would do this with, they are able to handle the activity without too much prompting on my end. So that means that they already know the expectations. They know their responsibilities. They can ask me for kind of more of a direction of where to go instead of, hey, what's the answer to this, Miss Burns? It can be, how would I ask this? How can I say this? Or is that something that I can say? That would be what my job would be in this activity. It allows me to give them that that time to know that this activity is on you. Not so much I'm up here giving you a lecture about it. 
encouraging. I think the parlay is a great way for students to interact with each other digitally. Um, this gives them that space to hone in on what it is they're trying to say. I know that it's difficult for students to write down what they're trying to say. Sometimes it's difficult for students to talk out loud with what they have to say. Uh, by giving them the digital resources, it takes out that second guess that I know that a lot of my students do when it comes to, all right, everyone has to speak or designate a speaker for the group and it's always the same person speaking. This allows the students to actually have a role to participate in the class that they normally probably wouldn't. And I'm excited for them to actually try that. It's, hey, you can't be wrong because it's what you think. And as long as you're using the resources to back that up, then it's okay. And like I said with Parlay, I would be using this beforehand. That way my students have an easier way to get involved in it. So we would start off with something low stakes, like an article stating the top five states in the United States or something of that nature. And then, you know, debate on whether or not that is truly something that they believe. Do you think that the credentials were correct in who was selecting the states? Like something like that. It can be silly before we get serious. And I think that that's a big thing um, with our students, too, is to know that it's OK, that it, you're not going to be perfect on the first try. And that is OK, because I think in this digital age, they all see these polished, pretty endpoints but they don't see all the trouble and the hardships that went into getting there to begin with. And through this activity, I'm encouraging them to further their thinking, to further their conversations and discussions with each other. Questioning. This activity allows students to question a multiple amount of things, such as the sources they are given. They can question those sources. They can say, hey, I'm not sure if something that was written in 2009 should be that relevant for today's use or something of that matter. They can question each other, saying, why did you think that? How did you think that? Any sort of those kind of options. They can even question the topic at hand. They can say, why are we doing this? What should we get from this? And they can also also question the context of the sources. They can say, was this made with this in mind? Who wrote this? How did they write this? Any of those sort of things. By allowing the students to freely question what they're given, they're able to further their understanding of the subject as a whole. And through this, they can make connections from one unit to the next, from one topic to the next topic. It can be more streamlined. It can be more of an even flow of how do you get from point A to point C. You know, you got to get to B somewhere. Um, this allows the students to have that space to question. For fostering alternative problem solving in my activity of the Parlay website, they are able to see the perspective of others concerning the same topic. When they are given a chance to see how another person thinks about the topic and they have the same exact resources to look at, that might help them think about their answers in a different way. When they see new perspectives brought up in the responses, it can spur those ideas that they might not have thought of before. And they can use that to further their learning. They can say, hey, I never thought of it that way but we were given the same resources. We were given the same topic. We were given the same question, but it's nice to know that my classmate across the room is thinking like this because I never thought of it like that. Normally, I would just have one student interacting in a face-to-face -face discussion in class. So Parlay gives me that opportunity to allow more students to interact, more voices to be heard in the classroom. And I really like that. Using computational thinking, vocabulary across curriculum. So we have abstraction, decomposition, evaluation, persevering, and collaborating. Um, I'm not going to touch on each and every single one of those because that would take quite some time. But as a whole, this one activity in Parlay is allowing for five different 
terms to be evaluated and then can be used across the curriculum. So you can take this and you can use this in, like I said, science. You can use it in math. You can use it across the board. It's not just for heavy reading and writing classes as it, history and language arts usually are seen as. My ISTE standards for teachers Throughout this activity, I'm able to give the information to my colleagues to help them learn about new digital technologies and resources available to them. So that's 2.2.C. And by helping my coworkers, I'm broadening our collective knowledge and toolkit when it comes to creating new activities for our students. I am able to further what it is that we are actually doing for our students and to introduce new ways to get the same sort of topic done. And my students, by having my students participate in this activity, they are being asked to understand the importance of reliable online sources to be able to communicate that information to their peers. That is ISTE 1.3.B. I am asking my students to look at the resources at hand and take that into consideration. They are needing to think about the credibility, the accuracy, the perspective, the relevance of this information when they are doing this assignment. They are being asked to look at several different layers of thinking in order to get to the end product for their assignment. Those are my references, and that concludes my final here.